Alright, so hi again, it's me Katie. Today we're going to be going through another daily UI challenge prompt and the prompt today is to create a music player. And I've decided to do that on mobile, so let's get started. First things first, I'm going to create a placeholder here for some album art. Because um, when you're listening to a specific song, it's pretty common to see the art for work for the album that it is has been released on. Um, and let me add some rules in here so we can get make sure our content is aligned appropriately. And we'll lock those. And let's get this artwork aligned. Okay, and then we will put the artist name here in the center below that. Um, and below that we will do the, or actually, you know what, it makes more sense to have the song name because that's usually what you're interested in. And we'll do the artist name below that um, and let the song name take precedence in the hierarchy. So we'll make it a little bigger. Um, and then let's see here, let's do a play arrow here. And so we'll just kind of make a rough triangle and let me zoom in. Let's do icons for next and then also for previous. So that way you can skip through songs in the album or on the playlist. Try to distribute these. Work on that spacing a little bit. Seems decent enough. Um, let's bump that down a little bit. And between the song and artist names and the actions here, I'm going to put in a track so that users can see how far into the song they are. Let's see, let's add a title up top so that users know where they are and that can either be playlist or album. Um, I feel like most common these days is to be a playlist, at least for when I'm using a music app. Um, and we'll add a back arrow in here so that users can go back to the master list instead of looking at a song in detail. And then the last thing I'll add here is a plus sign. And what that's for is so that a user could add this song to their favorites. That's something that I see. Uh, I use Spotify primarily, so that's something I use quite a bit. When I like a song that I'm listening to, I'll just add that to my list so I can come back to it. Um, so let's see here. Let's pick a, an, an artist and song. So we'll do Dua Lipa. Seems like something kids are listening to these days. Um, and IDGAF is one of her popular songs. Um, let's see here. Let's go to the... Let's start looking at some typefaces. I want something that's clean and doesn't introduce a ton of personality just because I want to let the artwork kind of do the talking here. Um, I, since we aren't going to be able to control what songs the user is listening to, um, we want to make sure that the typeface is pretty neutral and it's not giving any sort of uh, sway or interfering with any of the, the artwork or song types that people are going to be listening to, music categories, whatever those are called. <laughs> um, so let's go with that one. Picked Open Sands. And we'll make the these a little bigger, and I'm just realizing that I switched those on accident. We'll put the song title up top and the artist below, like we actually had in our wireframes. And we will bump the artist name back a little bit so that the song title can take precedence. Let's see if we can do something with the font weight. That feels a little heavy. It feels like it could be good. Yeah, let's go with that for now. Okay, so let's kind of modify this song track here. We'll go with Something, the bass track I want to make kind of faint so that the progress against it can stand out. Um, and we'll add a little marker here to indicate where it is, and that way users can actually grab onto something of at least larger, a significant size uh, to be able to kind of scan through the song or buffer through. Um, it needs to be a little bigger, so we'll bump that up a little bit. 
and let's center those. All right, that feels like a good size. So let's work on what the actual progress in the track can look like. What color? We want a color that's going to stand out. So let's pick, let's do something like this purple. Nice and vibrant. And users will definitely be able to see that as they are glancing at the screen to know how far into the song they are. Let's bump this down a little bit tweak the spacing and on the track you're going to want a timestamp to know where you are in the song versus how long the song is so we'll tuck that in there and the song duration over on the right side and let's see here next step is to let's start playing with what these action buttons can look like. I think I want to put the play button inside of a circle so it is more visually distinct. So let's grab that purple. I'm actually going to change that play icon to be a pause icon because the way that we've got it mocked up, the song is in progress. So let's go with that. Oh, that's too big. Space those out. make them a little taller that seems decent and then let's work on the next and previous icons so those I don't want to be as distinct so I'm gonna kind of fade those back a little bit by making them a lighter gray and then that way visually they're less prominent in the hierarchy. And we'll add some space here to make sure that users don't accidentally fat finger it. And let's add a little bit of dimension here. We'll add a little drop shadow to the button, the play button, so that it stands out a little bit more and it's obvious that you can click on it. Now let's change the playlist title It's less important in the hierarchy of things, so we'll bump it back and make it a lighter gray. But let's also change the style a little bit so that it stands out from the actual song details. So we'll make that all caps and adjust the tracking a little bit. And let's see here. What do we want to do next? Let's find the artwork for this song here. maybe change the song since we did top 100 I want to make sure that the song we're using is actually current so we'll go don't start now because that's actually a 2020 song and let's find some album artwork do 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 all right so Let's do a clipping mask on this. I think I want to do this in kind of a uh, in a circular shape here, circular mask. I kind of want to play on the idea of an album or like a, what are those things? Turntables that DJs use. A, a record here. So I want to put it in a circular mask. And let's add a little bit of dimension to play on the dimension that we're using for the play button. Let's see. Eh, that might be too literal to put the cutout in the center there. So let's get rid of that. Um, we'll let the reference to the album be a little bit more subtle. Let's add some interest around here. Add a couple textural strokes. Let's actually play on the idea of this being like sound waves. That seems interesting. So we'll increase the spacing between each one as if it's fading out. Let's see. 
We'll make all the stroke widths the same. We'll pull in that purple. And let's actually make the stroke widths get gradually smaller and that'll put increase the effect of them fading out. But introducing those plays with the legibility, interferes with the legibility of both the song details and the playlist title. So let's play with that. I think we can still keep this effect without interfering with legibility. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can add some sort of gradient overlay to kind of fade those back even more. So let's add a gradient. We'll decrease the opacity and let's see, let's do the modify the color here. We'll go zero transparency and then change that one to white and we'll switch the rotation here or the direction. It's still, let's see, let's bump that back. Get that behind the type. That helps, but it's still not quite right. So let's do, let's move that up so that the opaque part of that is closer to where the typeface is. And let's bump the words down a little bit. That helps. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Move the spacing and see if we can get the legibility to work a little bit with how those lines are cutting into the type and we'll change the opacity of that again. We'll do the same thing and reverse it up top and that way the playlist title is also legible. So we can move that down a little bit. And so those kind of sound waves become really secondary to the artwork and all of the other information because they really are meant to be textural and kind of extra, they're not really, they, they don't have any importance, so we don't want them to overrun or uh, take precedence over the actual information on the screen. So let's play with the way that this button looks so that it stands out a little bit more because that linear icon was getting lost a little bit on the screen, so we'll add the purple background. Let's see. get this back arrow to kind of follow suit. So we will let's change it from an actual arrow to just an arrow head. Decrease the size and up the weight. And we'll center those. That top feels a little bit off balance though. So let's actually see if we can bring this purple over here too so we kind of have a unified button style. We'll center those up. Keep grabbing the wrong thing here. Center those up. Take that and then we'll actually bump the arrow over a little bit. Arrows are tricky because they're when they're actually centered they feel off-centered because the one side is always heavier than the other. That feels a little funny with the three purple buttons there. It feels kind of like we're getting this triangle and your eyes bouncing around the screen too much. So let's see, let's actually try to do more of an outline effect so that the top buttons become secondary to the bottom, to the play button. Let's do that the same. Still feels a little funny. That needs to line up. Let's decrease the importance by making them gray instead of purple. That helps, but they still feel kind of like ears or eyeballs on the screen being on either side and at the top. So let's actually decrease them in size. They become even less important.
So we don't want the user's eye to bounce all over the screen, but we want them to realize that the buttons are there and that they are actions that they can take. Um, let's see. Let's increase the contrast here so that the playlist title is more legible. And I think I'm actually going to go back to an arrow style here. Sorry, I keep flip-flopping all over the place. Um, I think having the back button be more of an arrow instead of a, instead of carrying through on the button style helps users to see that it's less of like an action that you can do with the details of the screen you're on and that it's more of like let's escape this thing so we'll do a different style and treatment for that um, and let's go back in here and modify this gradient a little bit so that make sure that playlist title and those actions up there are legible and let's make sure that we don't have any weird overlap here so let's do let's move that up so that it's not overlapping with the gradient down below and then let's get lined up on the edges. All right, it looks like we're aligned. And what else? I think we All right, I think we're good. Um, next step in the process, I am going to put a mask on this so that the screen is contained in its own thing. And that is because I'm going to compose it for Dribble again, a Dribble shot. Um, I've been posting these on Dribble as I go, just as a way to track what I'm doing and kind of share the progress against the challenge. Because these challenges are once every day for 100 days. There's a lot of them. Um, so hopefully you're enjoying it because you'll probably see these quite a bit. <laughs> um, okay, so struggling a little bit with, there we go. We want the image to be on top, and now let's create the mask. And let's adjust the artboard size to be Dribble's suggested size, and let's get the screen on the artboard, and we'll round the corner so that it feels more like a phone. And we need to adjust the fill of the mask so that it is solid. There we go. And let's do, make sure the background is the right size. And we'll copy, I kind of want to do a texture in the background that is a play on the sound wave effect. So I'm going to copy that out of here, out of the mask, and put it on the artboard. And then that way we can kind of have those circles be a con continuation of that pattern there. So let's get, I grouped these, so let's get rid of the stuff we don't need. Get rid of the gradients. And we've got our circles there and we'll center those back up. And then let's do, let's grab those and we'll send them to the back and we'll make them white. So that they can actually be seen against that purple. And let's add some more to the background texture to really get the idea that this these sound waves are like fading out. So let's play with the size of these strokes. We'll make the furthest one out the lightest and we'll kind of get them gradually heavier as we get closer to the actual screen. Just the opacity of this drop shadow, and that will allow the screen to kind of stand off the artboard. And um, that way, it stands out against the pattern that we've got continuing out from the sound waves on the mock up. 
Um, and that's it. That's all we've got. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again soon.